Okay. Hi, I'm Sarah, um, and I'm here to talk to you about a project I've been working on for a couple years now while I was at UWT. Um, and this began as part of a side project for an interview project where um, former people who were around in Tacoma during the height of the Japantown community were interviewed about their experiences. So that's kind of part of the underlying idea of the project. So the problem that I was trying to address with this project was that information on Japantown history was difficult to access. Many people didn't know about it. You had to go to all the different libraries in person, which many people just want to go online and <laughs> find everything immediately. So difficult for the public to reach. And then the data was, the information about space and where people lived was spread out over so many sources that it was hard to get a visual in your mind of what the city was like. So I took all of the different little details in the different sources and arranged them into something that was mappable so that the public and us GIS people and mappers and cartographers can look at it as well. So I thought I'd start with where we are today. This is a picture of the Hotel Victoria and now the Hotel Murano. And this picture is from July 1931. And this is the view on Market Street looking north. Um, so right here's the Hotel Victoria. Um, and there's, you can always look on my website later and see this more of these kinds of pictures. So by connecting spatial details, I mean that I was looking at um, the interviews that were conducted, some different Tacoma City directories, um, a couple different special collections online and in person, and um, historical publications, so like books that were published at the time in the 20s and um, other scholarly works more recently. So I will take you to my website. So this is the website, it's tacomajapantown.github.io. Um, this is just the homepage. You can quickly look at some pictures, find out some more information. The first map I made in this small series is this interactive map. Um, and this is using Leaflet and the Moving Marker plugin. And this is running Leaflet 0.7. Um, so as you can see, there's these little moving dots, and that represents a child or a young adult moving through their daily spaces. Um, and then each person has a color-coded path of everywhere they would go. Um, so they would start out at their home, walk to their public high school, and then it was common for Japanese children after their public schooling to go to the Japanese language school, um, which is down here. So these pop-ups are filled with information I collected from my different sources. Um, I have a pause play button, which is really cool. And then all the rest of the data pretty much lives here in these three other maps um, because it's really dense in certain parts. You can see a little part here and another section up here. Um, so the community was most dense right where we are on Broadway and Market. Um, and this is just businesses. Um, so here's Hotel Murano. And you can see each one of these um, represents a business that was owned or ran by a Japanese family. I will also show you this map. And this map shows places that were important to the community, like parks and associations, places of worship, um, community centers, a few vacant lots that were used as playgrounds, um, things like that. Um, that's really the extent of the mapping. There's one more with homes on it. Um, so there's a lot of homes in this area as well. Um, some of them have family photos attached to them. Um, some of that is from the special collections and also from people's personal collections. Um, future work ahead in this project, um, we are waiting for um, funding and administration things, but eventually there will be a contact us page where people can submit any media or stories that they have, and then I'll be maintaining that, getting those messages, and trying to verify and add it to this collection so it's a community resource. 
And this is also attached to a book that's being um, published next year, hopefully, by a couple professors that I have worked closely with. Um, so I guess I should open it up to questions. This is usually a more question-heavy topic, and people want to know specifics. Um, all right. Are you going to deal with the next act, the removals? Um, no. So one of and, the and if so, why not? <laughs> because that's that's the elephant in the room. It's yeah. what it's what happened to them, yeah. and they were sent to Manzanar. And, uh, and other less salubrious places. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Bainbridge Island has done a damn good job mm -hmm. uh, with their story of removal mm -hmm. because it actually had a, a, a decent ending. Mm -hmm. The white community didn't reject them. They let them back. Tacoma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the community was primarily sent to Pinedale Assembly Center or um, the Puyallup Fairgrounds and then sent to Tule Lake Camp or um, Mini Doka in Idaho. Um, so the reason I didn't talk about that in this project is that um, it's a contentious um, problem. Um, there's a lot of different feelings surrounding it, um, but many people in the community um, and scholars also have felt that sometimes focusing too much on incarceration and traumatic events can overshadow what life was really like, and therefore we don't have any understanding of their actual history and what they did and those daily life histories. Um, we only know about what happened to them um, because of the government or things like that and discrimination. Um, so. Part of the purpose of this project was to illuminate Tacoma's history because we didn't really have any one place to go to to learn about our own city's history and people who lived here. We have a lot of information about the Chinese and other racial groups, um, but all we had about Japanese folks in Tacoma was that, um, unfortunately, they left. Um, so it was really important to me to highlight what their actual lived experience was. Any other questions for Sarah? Just curious, are you planning on doing this for like Seattle as well? Because I know there's a huge Japanese community there as well. Yeah, um, unfortunately I am bound by time <laughs> and resources. Um, that would be really amazing. Um, but at the moment, um, we are sticking to Tacoma. Um, I am still being led by two professors on this project and they are sticking to Tacoma as well. Um, but we'll see what happens in the future. Seattle certainly has a more robust local Japanese history, um, especially since they still have some of their landmarks up there. Um, right now, we only have um, two original publicly accessible buildings um, other than homes, so it will be great. Um, there's one back there I saw first. Hi. Um, Hello. In my opinion, the ending to um, what happened to the Japanese was not decent in any way. Um, they came back to homes that were wrecked and had a bunch of discrimination um, terms on them. Um, I know you had just mentioned you don't really want to do anything about kind of like the um, internment um, with good fair points, um, but I'm curious about something like post-internment, perhaps even modern day to see kind of the longevity of like that impact mm -hmm. and like the gener multi-generational trauma rather than just like the immediate impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's a really interesting um, topic, really valuable. Um, the information that I have about that in Tacoma is that there was a few thousand people who lived here before and 52 people came back um, after the camps were closed. Um, but as far after that, only a small couple families stayed permanently because like you said, they came back and things absolutely were destroyed. Their properties were taken, their stuff was gone. Um, just um, so many people left and went somewhere else that was more friendly. Um, but that's all I know about that. Um, so that'll be great research. Uh, 
Uh, this is an impressive uh, project you have, and uh, Thank you. it's nice to see that um, uh, that it's operational. It does, however, invite enhancements, as we've seen several uh, suggestions here. And I guess I would add in some ways that it would be interesting if you could link this to, uh, to a digital copies of the census manuscripts, mm -hmm. which could really illuminate something about the neighborhoods in which the people lived and what they did and things of that nature. Um, I realize your time is limited, you know, but, <laughs> but basically, you know, put that on a uh, to-do list um, going forward. Oh yeah, that's absolutely on our to-do list. Um, those census documents are really fascinating and I would love to include that in the future. Um, but, you know, time and being a grad student while I created this <laughs> um, definitely limits it. Uh, I was wondering, how many individuals did you interview representing how many families and how did they, you locate them? So the interviews were conducted by two professors at UWT, Dr. Hoffman and Dr. Hanneman, in the early 2000s. They um, primarily were based in Tacoma and Seattle, and they made a few trips to St. Louis and Northern California, one other place I can't remember. And those students were located because um, they were attendees of the Japanese language school. So they were able to contact people who were on the roster and also from other community members who kept tabs on each other. I'm trying to find the pop-up for it. But it was through community members they were able to contact each other and reach out. And so they were 42 people interviewed um, for the project. And it was about their experiences as a child because they were in school at the time. And so is there, was, was there a sense of urgency because of time and the aging of the population that you're trying to identify and speak with? Um, well, unfortunately, speaking time is um, not really available anymore for this topic, um, certainly with children and grandchildren. Um, but yeah, at the time of the interviews, people were um, definitely elderly, um, but that brought a lot of really interesting perspective to the interviews um, and understanding and experience and wisdom that they also offered about their experiences. I hope that answers. Hi, um, this, I, I love your project. It reminds Thank me you. a lot of my project. Um, and I guess I was wondering what, um, what year your data represents and if it represents all the data from all the data you've collected or one specific year? Yeah, so um, this is all the data I've collected. My data collection ranges from 1888 until 1941. Um, so there's, through all the different sources, it can be difficult to track what year something exactly is from. Um, so that's why this is just a comprehensive database. And some people might have multiple houses on the map because they moved, of course, or different locations for their businesses, um, just because it's such a wide range of time. All right, uh, do we have any last questions for Sarah? It was a really engaging conversation. Uh, so let's give her a big round of applause. Thank you so much.